While The Art of War by Sun Tzu is hailed as one of China's oldest surviving military treatises, and among the earliest military works in the world, many have not had the opportunity to delve deep into its teachings. So, are you curious about the subtle deceptions hidden within this ancient military classic? In The Art of War by Sun Tzu, the deceptions are divided into two parts. First, there's the art of disguise, which includes strategies such as, when able to attack, we must seem unable, when using our forces, we must seem inactive, when we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away, when far away, we must make him believe we are near. These tactics aim to confuse the enemy and conceal true intentions. The second part involves strategies against the enemy, including hold out baits to entice the enemy, feign disorder, and crush him. If he is secure at all points, be prepared for him. If he is in superior strength, evade him. If your opponent is of choleric temper, seek to irritate him. Pretend to be weak, that he may grow arrogant. If he is taking his ease, give him no rest. If his forces are united, separate them. Behind these wisdom lies a multitude of stories from warfare and military leadership. We will delve into how these ancient insights were applied on historical battlefields and explore whether they still hold value today. Today, I will delve deep into the first major category, disguise. Disguise is not merely a means to deceive others, it plays a crucial role in both the natural world and warfare. In nature, organisms must master the art of disguise to protect themselves and ensure survival. For example, picture the snow hare in the Arctic, its fur is as pure white as the snow, allowing it to blend seamlessly with its surroundings, confusing predators, and increasing its chances of survival. Similarly, in warfare, disguise is equally vital. On the battlefield, various methods of disguise must be employed to disguise oneself, deceive the enemy, and catch them unprepared and unexpectedly. Hence, when able to attack, we must seem unable, in simpler terms, is showing weakness. This means that even when you have the strength, you should act as if you are weak, making the enemy believe that you are incapable of confronting them. War is a domain filled with ambiguity and uncertainty, where both sides conceal their true intentions and present false information, this is a prominent feature of warfare. For this reason, Sun Tzu emphasized the principle in weak points and strong that, by discovering the enemy's dispositions and remaining invisible ourselves, we can keep our forces concentrated, while the enemies must be divided. Conceal the true intentions and present false information to the enemy. This strategy plays a crucial role on the battlefield, and let's illustrate the importance of showing weakness with a vivid example. During World War II, Germany planned to invade France, but mobilizing troops took time, and this unusual activity would undoubtedly have raised alarm among the French. Therefore, Germany adopted a strategy similar to showing weakness, aiming to deceive the French military and lull them into a false sense of security. Joseph Goebbels, the Nazi minister of propaganda, was hailed as the king of lies, and he famously said, repeat a lie often enough, and it becomes the truth. To confuse the French, Germany intentionally had female broadcasters report messages from the front lines every day, such as, dear French soldiers, we are friends, not enemies, we have no reason to fight here. We should visit each other's homes as guests. And at the end of the day, they would broadcast, Good evening, my French friends. Why should we shoot at each other? Another day is over, and we can rest peacefully. Wishing you good luck. This propaganda was incredibly sincere, and the Germans' melodious voices and fluent French made it difficult for the French to believe. The combination of their smooth voices and friendly propaganda seemed completely inconsistent with any signs of an impending attack. The Germans persisted in their daily and monthly propaganda, gradually causing the French to lower their guard. However, on May 10, 1940, at 5.30 a.m., 
while French soldiers were still in their dreams, German planes suddenly attacked, and a month and a half later, France surrendered. This example vividly illustrates the crucial role of disguise and propaganda in warfare and how these strategies can be used to achieve objectives. This is what Sun Tzu referred to as, hence, when able to attack, we must seem unable, which is the strategy of showing weakness. By gradually dispelling the opponent's vigilance, you catch them unprepared and unexpected, ultimately achieving Sun Tzu's advocated goal, attack him where he is unprepared, appear where you are not expected. In China, there's a saying that summarizes this strategic art, which is, to retreat is to advance. Therefore, sometimes, showing weakness when necessary is also an art of managing one's life journey, as not everything requires a relentless display of strength. Thank you for watching today's video. In the next video, I will use the example of Napoleon's Three Emperors Battle to provide a detailed explanation of the strategy, when using our forces, we must seem inactive. If you enjoyed today's content and found it helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out on more exciting videos in the future. If you have any questions, suggestions, or would like to share your thoughts, please leave your comments in the comment section. I'm very much looking forward to hearing from you.